Well, praise the Lord. Yeah, we do have a bunch here. That's awesome. You all ready to, to worship today? What a great Sunday. Will you all stand and join us as we share in the power of the blood? Free from your burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you over evil a victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Now would you be free from your passion and pride? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Come for a cleansing to Calvary's tide. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Now would you be wider, much wider than snow? There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Stained sins are lost in its life-giving flow. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. To the 11 o'clock worship service of Nutrioso Bible Church. Mark is in the aisle with some bulletins. Uh, if you need a bulletin, raise your hand, and Mark will put a bulletin in your hand. There's a clipboard floating around. Is that pray, pray through worship? Okay. All right. Come on in. We've got plenty of seats. Good to see you folks. All right. Now that you have your bulletin, go ahead and then uh, turn it over, if you would, to the green uh, to church bulletin board on the reverse side. A couple, I need to make a correction to the bulletin. Um, the Sunday morning adult Bible study, also known as Sunday school, uh, there will be none, it says, uh, I had this pointed out me. There will be none February the 9th. <laughs> so let's make that April the 9th, which is Easter. So we won't have a uh, Sunday school on Easter, but or Kingdom Kids, right. Take your insert out, and it tells you all about what is going on here at NBC on Easter. Um, sunrise service out on the slab. Um, at 7 o'clock, and Pastor Tom will be doing that, and then we'll sing some songs out there, listen to Pastor Tom for a couple few minutes, a couple few, and then uh, come inside for a nice breakfast. Bridge Builders is, where's uh, Bridge Builders? Yes, you're back there. And it's going to be a great breakfast, right? Lots of food. Lots of food. Heidi said it, so it must be so. That's right. So join us for breakfast at 7.30. We'll feast or graze, however you want to take a look at that, and then meet in here at 9 o'clock to worship. It'll be great. I'm excited about it already. Uh, we have plenty 
of these inserts. There's a bunch, as a matter of fact, Mark is holding them. If you would take some and pass, we want to pack this sanctuary for Easter, the single most important day in history. And uh, we want to pack it in here, and we're going to have overflow in there, right, Pastor? Yeah. Okay. So, Skip. yes. Yes. That's correct. Well, yes. <laughs> I, I think everyone is aware of that, right? Sunday worship at 9, then uh, we're out of here. Okay? Shake your head, Jess. Heidi. Hello. Um, we're going to go out today and deliver some Easter bags with an invitation to a lot of the same folks that we uh, delivered to in at Christmas time. So I'm hoping and praying that we have a whole lot of people besides the folks that regularly come. Yes, we would love to see 10 or 15 people in the fellowship hall. That would be great. Because there's no room in here. There'll be a test later, so <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> okay, so that took care of Easter. I've got a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, the uh, Bible study on Tuesday at 2 is going to be Abraham's final exam of faith and how it relates to Easter Sunday. Interesting. I didn't, I didn't put all that together. But come at 2 o'clock in the fellowship hall to see how that does relate to Easter Sunday. Um, Ron? Yes. Today is National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. Thank the, you. the backbone of America is being celebrated today. National Peanut Butter and Jelly Day. It's also, in case you're interested, National Education and Sharing Day, National Ferret Day. That's a biggie. And uh, World Autism Awareness Day. So now you have that hot scoop. And um, let me see. I wanted to point out that we are going to be um, beginning a little blurb now and then called the NBC Money Minute. Okay? Lots of people have asked when it comes to tithes and offerings, you know, where does it go? That type of thing. And we, it's sort of an informational little blurb that we're going to do. So, with that in mind, Faith, hit it. <laughs> Thank you. Eric. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, right? That's what I'm. Thank you for the presentation of the five, Bruce. That solemn moment has affected all of us. I'm sure it has. Now, there's no way I can mess this up. If, if, I, get, if I get this upside down, I'm in trouble. Okay, if you have it upside down, it's a house. <laughs> in conjunction with the NBC Money Minute, uh, we're incorporating Fifth Sunday Missions because, as you know, as you know over there, um, Fifth Sunday, April is the Fifth Sunday Missions Month. There's four in the year. And this is the beginning of one. And we are going to be honoring and blessing Randy and Rhonda Elliott, our missionaries in Camp Verde. They minister at the Camp Verde Correctional Center for Yavapai County. Big deal. It is a big deal. So uh, I, did, I did some rough figuring. If 40 of us, and this will go on all month, so you'll have five Sundays to contribute to this. If 40 of us each gave $3,200 to Randy, okay, we're talking mucho dinero right away. Right, and re that just blows socks right off Randy. Wouldn't it? So anyway, um, whatever God gives you the notion to, you know, if you, if you look in your wallet and you see a 
$50 bill that you just keep moving around because it doesn't mesh with everything. Throw that back there with a, in an envelope for Randy. But uh, th this is what I'm talking about right here. So I'll set this over here. And anybody have an announcement that has not been made that needs to be made? Yeah, it does. Just push, push the button all the way to the top. No, it's the whole thing. It's up? It's on? You hear okay. me? It's on? Closer to your mouth. You hear me? We got you. <laughs> I want to stand up because I want to look at everybody. <laughs> Um, I got to tell you a little story that happened um, a few weeks ago. I went out to my wood pile, you know, like I do every morning to bring in my nighttime wood, sometimes for the day too, and um, it was starting to get kind of low, you know, and I was thinking, <laughs> boy, you know, if the Lord doesn't warm up the weather, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to turn on that old ancient 1972 gust. Uh, gas guzzling Coleman furnace I got in my house and I really don't want to do that so um, anyway that afternoon I was reading uh, the word and praying and wouldn't you know I came across that scripture that says take no thought of what you will you know wear or drink because your heavenly father knows what you have need of and um, <laughs> so I'm thinking, well, and you know, when God speaks to your heart, you hear him. I mean, if you talk a lot to God, you know, you hear his voice. You know what he's saying to you. You know, you know it's just not you thinking. And um, he said to me, yeah, you know, I would that you wouldn't be praying, you know, for the things that you need so much. But because I know what you have need of. But. I would rather that you prayed for others. And so I'm thinking, boy, you know, I felt like I shrunk down to the size of a walnut right then. <laughs> and um, anyway, so that's, and to be more grateful of the things that I have every day that I take for granted. And so anyway, last Sunday came around and I went out and got my wood for the day and I had like two days left of wood. <laughs> And I thought, okay, I'm going to stay present with the Lord today. I'm not going to worry about tomorrow or the next day, you know. And um, so Monday comes along, and I get a call from Fred. <laughs> and Fred says, hi, Ella. And I said, hi. And he said, hey, do you need some wood? <laughs> and I thought, what? <laughs> you know? And he said, well, yeah, you know, Denise said that you might be getting a little low on wood. And I said, well, um, how much would a little bit of wood cost? He says, oh, no, I'm not selling it. He said, we just have a little extra. And he said, if you need it, he said, if it's okay with you, I thought I'd bring it over. So he did, and I was just almost doing dances <laughs> when he came with that wood. I was just so excited. And it was like almost a week worth of wood. And um, I was so excited and so happy. And when he left, I was so elated, you know, and I, I'm thanking the Lord, you know. And then the next day, Fred calls me up, and he says, um, what's your physical address? I mean, he knew where I live, but he didn't know my physical address. And I'm kind of wondering why he needs my physical address, you know. And he says, well, there's a guy from Springerville coming over with a truckload of wood for you. And I said, what? <laughs> you know? And um, he said, yeah. So I, I was about in tears at that point. And when they came with the wood, I asked Fred, who was responsible for this? And he looked at me and he said, the church. So I just, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank the church for that wood. And me and my pups now were warm at night. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much.
And the church would say, you are welcome. <laughs> God was in that whole thing from beginning to end. Beginning to end. So was Fred. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other announcements? Let's move on to prayer requests and praises. Uh, Nancy's ready. Whoops, we got one. It's right over here, Mark. Karen's got one. Uh, the movie, Jesus Revolution, if you haven't heard about it, is about the hippies, Jesus freaks of the 70s, and the founding of Calvary Chapel. Um, it is showing here in Springerville at the El Rio Theater, and tonight's the last night, and the 4, four o'clock showing, I think that's the only showing today, is free. And I'm not sure what pastors were involved in it besides the community Presbyterian pastor, Bob Falquez. But anyway, they've paid for it to be covered. And anybody who would like to go, it's an awesome. We saw it already in Sholo, but I'm going again. Okay. Any other announcements? We're looking. Don't see any. Prayer requests? Faith, you are so sharp back there. Yeah, Faith is in mission control today, and John's back there too. Okay. Um, first on the prayer um, prayer request list would be Linda Martin. She is not with us today because she is under the weather. So lift her up. Also, the missionary that we're honoring this month with this Sunday missions. Randy Elliott, he had a, we were gone for a couple of days. He had a message on my answering machine that I listened to uh, last night. And the Yavapai County Sheriff's Department is asking him to become uh, a key member of a committee, for, for lack of a better word, a committee that uh, is going to be tasked with bringing new inmates programs to the jail. So they've asked him to become a part of that. Um, he asked for prayer because he knows we will pray for him. And uh, he asked for wisdom and the ability to be able to come up with some stuff that would really benefit the inmates. So there's the first two prayer requests. Anyone else have a request or praise? Back to Karen. So my girlfriend from fourth grade, we've been friends our whole life, is here. She and her husband are on an RV trip and with us for a couple weeks. They are atheists. But I talked her into going tonight to this movie because we were hippies. And we were there during the Jesus movement. And one of our close friends became a Jesus freak. And it was a marvel to us. So anyway, she's coming because she wants to see all that, you know, from during our time. Um, so I'm just asking for prayers for her and her husband that something touched them and the smallest seed get planted. This is a, that's a piece of cake for God. <laughs> piece of cake. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that. Anyone else? Over here, John. I'd just like to echo uh, a praise from the great story over there. Ever since we moved here a couple years ago, this community has been nothing but giving, nothing but um, wonderful to our family. Um, being able to be a part of that and, and get involved and, and help the community in other ways, I mean, it's just been so special for my family personally, so praise for that. Um, a couple of prayer requests. Um, my Our sister back in the valley, um, her and her boys, she's got two young boys, and uh, her husband, for the last two and a half months, they just can't shake some sort of sickness. They just keep getting sick week after week after week. Um, so just praying for them. Um, and then just a, a general prayer, uh, praise request for prayer. Because um, I think with everything going on um, in the world right now, the world could use, certainly use some more prayer. Now, John, was that your sister? What's that? Your sister? My sister, your Amber. Sister. Yep. Okay. And got then it. also I've got a, another sister, Sarah, who's 36 weeks pregnant, so that, 
that baby's coming anytime now. So, um, God's good at that too, isn't he? Yeah, you bet. We got you covered. Nancy's writing it down. Or any other prayer requests or pray? Hey, Jenny, and then back up to. I just wanted to thank everyone for their prayers for while we were traveling to and from Kansas. Um, it's always nice to be home, get home, it's safely. You know, with all the interstate driving and semis and stuff like that. So, thank you for your prayers. Right up to David here. Wow. So, the Bible tells us, instructs us that we need to pray for Israel. Right now, that nation's on fire. If you watch the mainstream media, I don't think you're really being told what's going on there, but... B.B. Benjamin Netanyahu is going after the crooked judges and they brought in these various rioters and literally they are rioting big time in Israel. So we want to pray that uh, for peace for Israel and they establish judge, uh, judges that are um, going to hold to the law. And we, we see it here in the United States how lawless we become and how right is now wrong and wrong is right. So please continue to lift up Israel in your prayers. The United States is one of Israel's most staunch allies and vice versa. So they deserve our prayers, certainly. Robin? I, I just want to thank everybody who donated or thought about um, donating and thought about my grandbaby. I do a yearly donation on behalf of her to preemies, to e either the hospitals or clinics with preemie clothes and newborn clothes because she was born severely premature and there was nothing available for her. So I do that on behalf of her. So thank you. Anyone else? Prayer request or praise? No? Uh, Mark, if you would hand the mic. Brother Lex down there, and Lex will lead us in the morning prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that we're here to worship in your house on this Palm Sunday. We thank you for everyone who has come to join us in this worship. Lord, we ask that you open our hearts today to this service. You've heard all these prayer requests the spoken and the unspoken, and we know that your will will be done. And Lord, uh, we thank you for the message that we're going to hear today and that it will be brought into our hearts and uh, that we will understand your word and your love. In Jesus we pray, amen. Amen. Praise God. Please stand and join us as we reflect on the sacrifice that our Savior made for each and every one of us. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world full of sinners was slain And so I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown And to the old rugged cross I will ever be true Its shame and reproach gladly bear And then you'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. And so I'll cherish the old rugged cross, till my trophies at last I lay down. 
I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. And in the old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. For it was on that old cross. Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood, comes flowing down. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you, I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. Where my heart has peace with God and forgiveness where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in all of you I'm in all of you where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you, I owe all to you. Here my hope is found, here on holy ground, here I bow down, here I bow down, here I hope to fight, here you save my life, here I bow down, here I bow. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I am all of you, I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you, I owe all to you. At the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you, I'm in all of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you, I owe all to you, I owe all to you, I owe all to you. Jesus. 
Praise God. You may be seated at this time. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. You know, it was our Jesus who bled on that cross to save each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. You know, salvation is free. It's a gift. It's there for every one of us to take. How I long to breathe the air of heaven Where pain is gone and mercy fills the streets To look upon the one who bled to save me And walk with him for all eternity There will be a day when all will bow before him there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose again holy holy is the lord and every prayer we prayed in desperation the songs of faith we say through doubt and fear in the end we'll see that it was worth it when he returns to wipe away our tears there will be a day when all will bow before him there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose again holy holy is the lord and on that day we join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice a thousand generations sing worthy is the lamb who was slain forever he shall reign oh, oh there will be a day when all will bow before him there will be a day when death will be no more standing face to face with he who died and rose again holy holy is the lord so let it be today we shout the hymn of heaven with angels and the saints we raise a mighty roar glory to our god who gave us life beyond the grave holy holy is the lord holy holy is the lord holy holy is the turn yes sir that was awesome was that awesome go on. do you know how hard they work at this we're so blessed to have this music team thank you because i don't think y'all would come just to hear me so i'm glad they're here right <laughs> thanks good morning we're going to finish up our series on the armor of God today. We're going to look at prayer. Now, this sermon series is based on Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. If you miss any of that, want to get caught up, you can find it on YouTube. Just go to YouTube, search for Nutrioso Bible Church, or go to our website, which is nutriosobible.church. Okay? So let's look at that scripture one more time, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. 
For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. All right, so Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Paul is preparing us for spiritual warfare. And he's using the Roman soldier that was common in his day and where he was uh, to, to illustrate how we can prepare and how we should prepare uh, for this warfare. And he really covers it well. He gives us a complete battle plan and he leaves nothing out. So I want to do a quick review since this is the end of the sermon series. Number one in your outline, in Ephesians 6, Paul tells us or teaches us about spiritual warfare. This isn't just a, a normal, regular, everyday battle. This is spiritual warfare. Number two, we must be strong in God's mighty power. I, I've said that every part of the sermon series because I want it to stick. I think that's one of the things that I personally forget. I have these V8 moments, right, Or I forgot I could rely on his power, and I was trying to be the tough guy, right? You know, the Roman soldier's strength came in numbers, in superior training, and in the best equipment, but our strength comes from God. And if we stay in it, as Paul tells us to do, guess what? We win. We win, because nobody can match his power, right? Number three, we need to put on the full armor of God. You can't pick and choose. You can't say, well, I'm good at this, not good at that. Or this is convenient, and that's not convenient. Paul tells us to put the full armor of God on. You know, those Roman soldiers would never go to, to battle without all their equipment, all their armor. And Paul says we shouldn't either. We need all of it. And he repeats that in this passage, so it's got to be important. Number four, our enemy is not flesh and blood. You know, the Roman Empire would send out spies so they would know their enemy better. They wanted to know how many there were, how well they were trained, how well they were armed, and what lied between the Roman army and wherever they were going, whoever they were going to go after. Did they have to go across the desert? Did they have to go over mountains? Was there water in the way? Were there walls when they got there that they had to get through? You know, knowing their enemy was a great advantage to the Roman army. Paul wants to make sure we understand who or what we're up against too. See, Satan, he's not a soft guy. He's not an easy opponent. He's a vicious, nasty, evil being who will take you to hell with him if you let him. Number five, we must stand firm. You know, the soldiers of the Roman Empire would never back down unless they were ordered to, because if they did, they'd be either severely punished or even put to death. We can't back down either. Paul tells us to stand firm, and he uses the word stand four times in this passage, so it's got to be important, right? See, there's nothing in this teaching that tells us to be timid or to cower or to hide or to back down from Satan. We're to stand firm with the armor of God, right? Number six, we need the belt of truth buckled around our waist. These soldiers had a belt. We studied this a few weeks ago, a big old leather belt that held their, their tunic in place and held their... Their, their sheath in place and their breastplate in place. It was an important part of their armor. And God's truth cinched up around the middle of our lives is important too. It keeps everything together for us, just like it did the soldier. Number seven, the breastplate of righteousness in place. You know, the soldier's breastplate, it protected all of his vital organs, his core, front and back. It went from neck to thigh, and it kept his vital organs pretty much safe. Without that, they wouldn't last very long in battle right? Well, our breastplate protects our spiritual core, our hearts from Satan and from his attacks. Remember now, it's the breastplate of righteousness. I want to remind you what righteousness is. It's the act of doing what is in agreement with God's standards that makes us righteous, okay? The act of doing, being in that proper relationship with God. We can only get there through Jesus. Number eight, our feet fitted with a readiness from the gospel of peace. You know, one of the first things they teach you in a survival class is to protect your feet. If your feet get damaged, it's hard to do anything. You know, it's hard to defend yourself. It's hard to get help. 
it's hard to build shelter or get food. You really got to protect your feet. These soldiers, their feet were fitted with a heavy-duty leather sandal. And if you remember, we, we studied this. They, had, they were studded with hollow-headed hobnails in the bottom of the sandals, which kind of worked like cleats. It gave them traction. It kept them ready at all times. Our readiness comes from the gospel of peace. And the gospel of peace is what? It's the good news of a peace we can have with God because of the blood of Jesus. So important. Number nine, we must take up the shield of faith. The Roman soldier's shield protected every part of him. Now, I'm messing this up. It was called a thudery house or something like that. We talked about it. It was like a big door, and it literally protected every part of that soldier's body. Um, they had to have that, or they wouldn't last very long out there. Paul says our faith will do the same thing for us. It'll protect us. It shields us from all of the enemy's flaming arrows. I love that word, all. Don't you love that word, all? That means you don't have to worry that some of them are, are not, you know, God can't stop them. God can stop all of them. Number 10, the helmet of salvation. Just like the Roman soldier had to take his helmet with him for it to help him, you know, salvation's the same way. It's there for us, but we have to accept it. We've got to take it. You know, we've got to receive it for it to help us. Number 11, we must take the sword of the Spirit. You know, the Roman soldier's sword was a lethal weapon. It really was. It was very well designed, very well made. And guess what? This soldier was very well trained in how to use that sword to his advantage. Um, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, is our offensive weapon. It's how we can slap Satan upside the head. And you know, as an old redneck, I like slapping Satan upside the head. But guess what? we got to take it with us, right? You can't, you can't say, well, I'm going to use the Bible if you don't know the Bible. you got to spend time in it. you got to train in it, just like the Roman soldier did. That's not going to do you a lot of good. you got to uh, apply it to your life. Number 12, the last thing Paul gives us to prepare for spiritual warfare is prayer. Prayer. It's such an important part of our walk, is it not? It's such an important part of our battle against Satan. And I'm going to go, go as far as to say it's the single greatest weapon we have in spiritual warfare. Now, I read one seminary, and I read a lot of, of um, um, concordances and things like that that Tom's taught me how to read. I like the ones with pictures. They work better for me, personally. <laughs> but there's one commentary. The guy said that we should not consider prayer to be a part of God's armor. I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. I'll tell you why. Verse 18, which is what we're going to kind of focus on for a minute here, it begins with the word and. And. You know, it's easy to kind of blow past those little words, you know. You can't do that. See, the word and tells me that verse 18 is a continuation of the teaching from verses 10 to 17. So it's clear to me uh, that we are to do what Paul's already told us to do, basically put on the full armor of God, and what he's about to tell us to do, which is to pray. To me, it's not just a part of the armor. I think it's a critical part of the armor. Now, in verse 18, Paul refers to prayer three times. He says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests and keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So apparently, the Apostle Paul thought prayer was important. What do you think? Is it important? I agree. I think it's real important. So if we're going to say it's important, we want to make sure we all understand what it is. The Wikipedia definition is prayer is an invocation or act that seeks to activate a rapport with an object of worship through deliberate communication. Do you like that? I mean, it's true, okay? But I'm going to boil this down a little bit for us Christians, okay? It's simply the act of communicating with God, talking to him. Listening to him. That's the part I think we forget a lot. Listening to him, right? So let's break this teaching down here in Ephesians 6. The first thing he says about this is to pray in the Spirit. And I'll tell you, I think that when I think of that term, pray in the Spirit, I think there may be some folks who think that's you know, out of reach for them or above their pay grade or they don't understand it. It's, it's nothing that fancy. It simply means relying on the Holy Spirit. Trusting the Holy Spirit to help you communicate with God. In the book of John, John 14, 26, says that the Holy Spirit is the helper. He's the helper. That's so important for us to understand. And he will help us, not just with prayer, but in other areas of our life, if we let him. 
Now, I don't know. Maybe you're sitting there listening today and you're thinking, well, you know, I, I don't know what to say to God. I don't really know exactly how to pray or what to talk about with him, what to ask him about. I don't know what words to say or to use in my prayer. You know, you've heard those people that pray really eloquently and, and have big words and they just seem to really know what they're doing. And you're like, wow, you know, it's intimidating, right? See, I understand that. Because I, it took me a long time to wrap my head around prayer. It really did. I mean, especially in public, right? But even by myself, it took me a long time to kind of figure it out, you know? But let me just say this. He's not looking for fancy words. He's not looking for eloquency. That's not what he wants, if that's the word, eloquency, okay? Let me tell you what Jesus said in Matthew 6, 7, and 8. He says, and when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. For they think they'll be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them for, now get this, your father knows what you need before you ask him. He already knows what you need. He doesn't need you to have some kind of fancy talk, right? See, to me, your father knows what you need before you ask him. That is awesome. Is that awesome or what? It's clear Jesus said we don't need fancy words. So if you're struggling with your prayer life, Throw those dictionaries out the window. You don't need them for this. Number 13 in your outline. See, your prayer life is between God and you. You can approach God with confidence because the Holy Spirit will help us if we trust him. You can approach, is, let me think, what do you think about that? You can approach God with confidence. You can. You can approach God with confidence. Man, that's awesome. I love that. I'm going to share a Bible verse with you that has two parts that I think are pretty cool. Romans 8, 26. The first part says the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Now, why do I think that's cool? Well, first off, it confirms what we just saw in the book of John. The Spirit helps us, right? But secondly, it says He helps us in our weakness. Isn't that when we need the help the most? You know, weakness can manifest itself or present itself in many different ways in your life right? I mean, you can be weary. You can be tired. Maybe life's been tough and you're just burnt out, right? That's weakness. Maybe your relationships aren't working out. You're having problems in your marriage. That kind of causes a weakness, doesn't it? Financial problems, health problems, all this stuff. They all cause a weakness in your life. But let me say this. I think maybe a bigger weakness than any of those is if you can't pray. If you don't know how to pray or if you're not comfortable praying, if you don't have a robust prayer life, that's a weakness. That's what that is. So let's look at the second part of Romans 8, 26. We do not know what we ought to pray for. Isn't that what we're talking about? It's funny how the Bible just seems to have everything in it, doesn't it? It really does. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. See, I've said it before, I'll say it again. We ask God based on what we know. That's what we do. I mean, what else do you have? You have whatever data comes in in your life. What you see, what you hear, what you feel, what people say to you, what's happening around you, that's all the data we have. So we have to use that to make our decisions with, and that's what we use to make our requests with. The problem with it is, at the end of the day, we don't know much. We don't know much. You know, the Spirit does, though. The Holy Spirit does. God does. And he'll intercede on our behalf if we'll let him. Wordless groans. Think about that for a minute. See, we don't have to have the perfect words to say. He's not looking for that. He just wants you to connect with him, spend time with him, love him. Okay, so we don't always have to know what to say to God, but we have to know we need him, right? We need him in our lives. We need an open line of communication with him. We need to spend time with him, and if we'll trust him with that, he'll handle the rest. I love Jeremiah 29, 12. When you call me and come pray to me, I will listen to you. Boy, I will listen to you. Now, did you notice it doesn't say, uh, if you call me and you're, you got some cool words, you know, and you're eloquent, like Skip, and, and you're, you're well-spoken, then I'll listen to you. It doesn't say that. 
doesn't say, hey, listen, if you pray to me and your prayers are pretty, I'll listen to you. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say, hey, listen, guys, I, I am a, I'm a busy guy. I'm busy. I've got a lot going on. So I'll listen to you, but your prayers need to be well organized. I'm looking for spreadsheets. I'm looking for bulleted and numbered lists. If you're going to come to me, you've got to be efficient because I don't have a lot of time. I'm busy. If you'll do that, I'll listen to you. Doesn't say that. Number 14 in your outline, God's promise. We can call him. We can pray to him, and he will listen. That's a great promise. Don't you think? I should think so. See, we all have the opportunity to live a spirit-filled life and have an amazing prayer life if Jesus is our Lord and Savior and if we'll trust the Holy Spirit. If you haven't taken that step and accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, you need to get with me. I'll give you a chance at the end to come up, um, but I'm here. Reach out. It's the most important decision you'll make in your life. All right, so we understand that we're to pray in the Spirit. The next thing Paul tells us in verse 18 is to do so on all occasions. On all occasions. See, our prayer life should be ongoing. Now, I've got a, a verse for you that's hard to understand. Okay, this, this is tough. Okay, it took me days to wrap my head around this one, okay? So I need you to focus, Dick. You can really catch this. Otherwise, you're going to miss it. You ready? 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray continually. Man, that's a tough one, don't you think? I just I couldn't hardly wrap my head around Pray continually. That's pretty much right to the point, isn't it? See, it doesn't say pray when you feel like it. It doesn't say, hey, pray when you have the time, when you can fit me in your busy schedule. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say Pray when things are hard. Pray when things are bad. Pray when it's tough. Pray when you, you're hurting. Pray when you've got a problem. It doesn't say that. It says pray continually. Can you wrap your head around that? Now, that was verse 17. I don't expand this a little bit. I want to look at verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for your life. Now, for just a second, what I want you guys to do, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to forget about your honey bunnies and your kids and, and your friends and me. I know that's hard, but forget about me for just a minute, okay? I want you to get all by yourself for just a second, because guess what? Every single person's walk is different than every other person's walk, okay? So I want you to think about your life right here, right now, this moment as you sit here. What's going on? Is it hard? Is it easy? Is it fun? Is it not so fun? Are you struggling with something? Are you hurting? Here's what I want you to do. As you think about where you are in your life right now, I want you to ask yourself a question. If you rejoiced always, would it be better? Would it be better? If you prayed continually, would your life be better? If you gave thanks in all circumstances, would your life be better? See, it doesn't matter how good or bad it is. If you do those things, your life will be better, and I guarantee it. I can guarantee that. You know why I can guarantee it? Because of the rest of the verse. This is God's will for your life. If you're living in the will he has for your life, it's going to be better. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. Do we do that? I mean, I can get on Facebook, right, and I'll see a post one of my friends puts on there, and it's like, Oh, my goodness, you know, I, I lost my job or my spouse left me or we got a bad medical report. Pray, please pray. I need prayers. And I love the one that's always calling on my prayer warrior, warriors, right? And, and so they want all this prayer, and that's great. That's great. Maybe they a bad medical report or lost their job. Whatever it is, they're asking for prayers, and I think that's great except for this. Most of the time, a month later, when that problem's in the rearview mirror, they're right back to posting dirty jokes and foul language and pictures of themselves out drunk with their friends. Is that what God has in mind when he says pray continually? I'm thinking not, you know? When he said pray on all occasions, I don't think that's what he wants. See, he doesn't want to just hear from us when we're in trouble. He wants to be the center of our lives every day, every day. All right, so we're to pray in the Spirit on all occasions. What's next? With all kinds of prayers and requests. This means trusting the Holy Spirit to help us communicate with God. 
all the time. All the time, not just when you have a problem. Talk to him all the time. Now, I'm going to give you my personal uh, prayer life testimony, okay? I told you before I struggled with prayer, and I did. But I'll tell you, today, I talk to God just about all the time. I really do. In fact, I think people probably think there's something wrong with me. Don't say anything about that. Don't, I don't want to hear it. Because I walk around, they think I'm talking to myself. But I ain't. I'm talking to him. When I'm driving, now here's something only Kim knows. The rest of y'all don't know. I'm either talking to him or singing to him. And boy, can I sing. Lord, have mercy. Whew. When I'm in that truck, it's like angels in there. It really is. When I'm working, you know, I work in the office a lot. I do pastor stuff and a little bit of web stuff. So when I'm in the office, if things go great, I'm talking to him. When things don't go great, I'm really talking to him, right? When I go to bed, you know, I struggled with sleep for years and years and years. And I still have a night once in a while. But you can ask Kim. This is what I, this is what I do every night. I make sure I'm comfortable. I make sure my eyes are closed. I get a nice, steady, deep breathing going and get into that cadence, and I pray. That's what I do every single night. And guess what? I never get to amen. I never get there. He gives me rest because I'm resting in him. See, I honestly can tell you something, and this is something I didn't have for the first almost 60 years of my life. God is standing right here with me right now. I believe it. He's with me everywhere I go, every minute of the day. And that part of my prayer life is part of the reason why I feel so connected to him. It's important. But you see, there's another part of my prayer life. It's when I take time to be alone with him and have a serious conversation with him. Trust the Holy Spirit to work through me in my prayer life, wordless groans. I'm telling you, ain't nothing like it. I want to do what, what Psalms 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. That's got to be part of your prayer life, man. Be still and let him be God, you know? So pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. What's next? With this in mind, be alert. Be alert. It's part of Paul's battle plan, right? The word he used there, the Greek word was agdaglik now, okay? It means to keep awake or keep watch. Keep awake or keep watch. So you should be praying all the time continually. And while you're doing that, you got to watch for the enemy's advances. He's coming. He's prowling right now. He's trying to get some of you while I'm talking to you. He's going to get the rest of you before you get out the door. That's what he does. We've got to persevere. Don't fall asleep at the wheel. With this in mind, be alert. And what? Always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. We're to go to God on behalf of each other. Sure. I think it's interesting, the, the Greek word he used there for praying, when he said praying for all the Lord's people, is deesis. Deesis. And it's the same word he used earlier in the verse for requests. Isn't that interesting? See, deesis means a petition or asking for help. It's clear we are to petition God on behalf of each other. Very clear. That's part of Paul's battle plan in spiritual warfare. All right, so let's boil this down. I've got to get you guys home by supper. So when it comes to our prayer life, number one, we need to pray constantly. This ongoing type of prayer will help us stay connected with him. Of course we should go to God when we have a need. Of course. But daily, constant prayer will build up our strength. It will build up our connection to him. It's important. Just talk to him. Just talk and listen to him, right? So important. Number two, our prayers should be intense. They should be intense. We need time alone with God. I tell you that every single week, don't I? You know, bury your phone in the neighbor's yard, you know. You don't need it. You got to get alone with God. You got to allow the Holy Spirit to move in your prayer life. Be still. Know he's God. Number three, our prayer life should be unselfish. It's so important that we pray for each other. Listen, I don't know if you guys know this. Maybe I'm the only one. Life is hard. Life's hard. Prayer helps. It sure does help. You know what? Often our prayers are much too much just for us, ourselves, and not near enough for others. We need to pray for others and get this. We need to pray with others. It's important. 
I can tell you this, anybody that's watching at home or if you're new here, New Trails of Bible Church is a praying church, and I'm so thankful for that. I am so thankful for that. You know, I've said before, and I'll say it again, there is a huge difference between when somebody says, hey, man, I'll pray for you, and when they pray for you. Big difference. Number four, our prayers need to be focused. Details matter. When you know of something that's coming up for somebody and prayers are needed, I'm going to give you a pro tip, all right? You ready for pro tip? I got one for you. Schedule it. Put it in your calendar. Set an alarm on your phone, okay? I'm serious. Get some details, names, times, the situational stuff, and go to God at that exact moment on behalf of that person. It's so powerful. I'm going to give you an example. I got a cousin named Greg. Hadn't spoken to him in about 45 years since I was one, because I'm only 46. <laughs> so I heard he was having some heart problems, so I called him the other day. He lives in Georgia. We had a great talk. Um, this coming Thursday morning, 6.30 Arizona time, Greg's going under, under the gun with, for some heart stuff. I don't know. They don't know what they're doing until they get in there. I will tell you I'll be praying for Greg at 6.30 a.m. this Thursday morning, Arizona time. I'm going to pray for those doctors and medical people that they have the, the, the patience and the skill, that they got rest that night and they do a great job. But more importantly, I'm going to pray for Greg, that he has the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Luckily for Greg, he's a Christian. He seemed real, real comfortable with what was going on. Schedule it. If you know somebody's going to need a prayer or something's coming up, schedule it. Powerful. It's powerful. All right, so this sermon series has been based on Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. But, but, as I studied for this sermon today, I accidentally read verses 19 and 20. I hadn't intended on doing that. It's hard, too, because I don't really know how to read, so it's, it's difficult. And I have to do something. I know I'm probably running a little long or something here. We got, we got communion today, which is awesome. You guys have got to hear this. I don't know what to tell you. Ephesians 6, 19 and 20. This is Paul. Pray for me also. Pray for me also. That whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an, an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. That word mystery, the Greek word he used was mousterion. You know what it refers to? It refers to the unveiling of Christ's coming. <laughs> you know... It just kind of blows my mind. I think, I think subconsciously, we all think of Apostle Paul as being some kind of Superman, right? Fearless, never discouraged, unstoppable. I mean, a guy did so much, right? But in many ways, Paul was just like the rest of us. He was a human being, frail, imperfect, fallen, just like you and me. Now, here's the trick. In verse 19 and 20, he didn't ask the church at Ephesus to pray for his comfort or his peace. He was in prison. I bet his comfort and peace could have been prayed for and that would have been all right, but he didn't ask for that. He didn't ask for prayers that he would be released from prison. He didn't ask for that. You know what he asked for? He asked them to pray that he would have the courage, the strength, the fortitude, and the words to say, to proclaim Jesus to anyone and everyone regardless of the consequences. Now, that's a prayer. That's a prayer. Number 15 in your outline, even the Apostle Paul, who had an unbelievable ministry, needed prayer. Even Paul needed prayer. He was humble enough to admit he needed God in his life. Yeah, he wrote a good chunk of the New Testament, but he still needed prayer. He still needed God. All right, that was, I'm not going to charge extra for the 19 and 20 there, okay? That's free. Value-added service. I hope this study in Armor God has been fruitful. I hope it helps folks, all of us, be better prepared for the attacks that you know are coming. I want to ask you a favor. Kind of down the same path that Paul went in verses 19 and 20. I want to ask you if you'd please pray for me. I need them. I want you to pray, not that I'll be even better looking next week, but that everybody who ever hears me preach Here's him. That's all I want. That's all I want. 
that I'll have the strength to under-shepherd the way God wants me to for you and for this church. And pray that Nutrioso Bible Church will continue to honor him in everything we do, because that's what they've done. It'll be four years next week that Kim and I have been here, and that's all we've seen since we've been here, and that's what we want to keep going. So I'm asking for prayers that I can be a good pastor. All right. We good? First Sunday of the month, we get to honor him now, right? We get to remember the price he paid for us. I'm going to ask Brother Skip and Gary if they'd come up and, and uh, hand out the elements. When you get the elements, please hold on to them. We'll take them as a church family. But while they're doing that, take the time to pray, to talk to God, and connect with God, and make sure you're where you should be with him before you take communion, okay? Matthew 26, verses 26 through 28. Oh, man. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, I know, I stop and point that out every single time, don't I? He gave thanks. Isn't that awesome? Knowing what was coming, he, he gave thanks. I think it's a great example for us. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, said, take and eat. This is my body. You know, his body was broken for us. What he went through, we could never even imagine. We could never even guess. We could never fathom. His body was broken for us, and we should always remember that. It's important that we always remember that. Lord, thank you. Thank you for the gift of salvation and for the broken body that redeems us. We're so thankful for that. We can never repay it. We love you. Thank you. Take the bread, please. Then he took a cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. New covenant is the new deal, right? I got reservations because of the new covenant. Without that, I got no place to go. It was because his blood was shed for us. Again, we can never forget this. It's so important that we always remember it. 
Thank you so much for the, again, for the gift of salvation, for the blood that brought in a new deal for us, a new promise for us, a new opportunity for us. Thank you so much. We could just never earn it, never deserve it. Thank you, Lord. Take the cup, please. Now, I'm going to tell you, I hope something in today's service has um, encouraged you. I'm hoping that, that something in today's service will make your life a little bit easier, especially when Satan attacks and you know he's coming. But if that didn't do it, I got something that I think will. The very next verse. Verse 29. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. I want you to think about that. He was making plans way back when. Plans for us. Right? Plans to be with us. So awesome. I just can't even get over the fact we have a God that cares enough about us to make plans to be with us. That is so cool. Father, thank you so much for your word and for your promise. And thank you for the armor that you give us in our spiritual warfare, our battle against Satan. I pray that each of us as we go out this week will spend some time getting to know that armor better, applying it to our lives better, so we're prepared for those attacks. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. They're going to sing a song, but listen, guys, next week is Easter, right? Now, I don't know if anybody knows this, but it's the greatest single event in human history. It, it really is, okay? It's going to be cool. I'm super stoked. I can't wait. Pastor Tom's going to speak at the, the sunrise service. The team's going to come out and do a couple of a cappella songs. Then we get to break bread as a family. Check it out. Bridge builders, these ladies are going to make pancakes. They're going to make ham. They're going to make taters. They're going to make eggs. They're going to make biscuits and gravy. Now, I'm not sure if they're making enough for everybody or not, but you guys can watch me eat. I, I, it's okay. I'll position myself where I, I can help out in that way, okay? It's the greatest single event in human history. It's the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus. We're going out today, the Bridge Builders, to invite folks in our community like we did at Christmas last year. I'm so stoked. I'm so excited. I can't wait. Now, listen, we need to pack this house. Why? Because everybody needs the truth. Everybody needs Jesus, every single person. Now, there's some white inserts in your bulletin today with the schedule of, of our, our service next week. Please take them and give them to people. We got extras. I'll go print a whole bunch. I got reams of paper. If I can get you guys to go visit a few thousand people each, why? I'll go make the flyers, okay? It's going to be a great weekend at NBC. Can't wait to see you guys. Have a wonderful week. So Stay for the song. <laughs> So everybody stand and join us as we praise him together. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unveiling love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me, all that you've done for me, yeah. Who breaks our chaos back into order? Who makes the orphan a son and daughter? The King of glory, 
the King above all kings. Who rules the nations with truth and justice, shines like the sun in all of its brilliance. The King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You would lay down your life And I would be set free For oh, Jesus I sing for All that you've done for me the lamb who was slain and worthy is the king who conquered the grave and worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquers the grave and worthy is the lamb who was slain worthy is the king who conquers the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love. That you would take my place. That you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life. And I would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Amen. Hallelujah. You all have a blessed, blessed week. Amen. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we 